Hey all, we are making a blackberry whiskey today. Uh, so I've just been out picking some kind of early season blackberries, uh, kind of middle of August at the moment. Uh, prefer the kind of earlier ones because I find them a little bit more kind of tart uh, rather than the, the kind of later season ones that have been hanging around. I find generally that they're a little bit more bland, but you know, use whatever you can kind of get your hands on. Um, as long as they're not rotten, they're obviously good to use. Very happy days. Uh, so I've kind of thought, I'm going to measure this in a bit, but, you know, I've got a, a decent haul of blackberries there, some really nice ones. Um, so obviously, blackberries, goes without saying. Now this is an infusion, right, so nothing too complicated, really simple to make. Uh, I've got a bottle of, I say, homemade whiskey, uh, but I'll just use a bottle of vodka with some whiskey flavouring. Uh, so a centre, centilitre bottle. Uh, I used Still Spirits Rye Whiskey. Um, last time I used it, and I actually prefer the, with, with this, so I used the, smoke, the smoked whiskey. Uh, the smoked kind of flavouring goes really well with the dark fruit, uh, but also rye whiskey does as well because you've got the, the, the spiciness from the rye. So again, complements the dark fruit really well. Um, don't have to use that. Off the shelf bottle of Bells is also fine. Uh, but you know, if you want to spend a bit more or do something else a bit more kind of exotic, then that's probably the way to go. Uh, a litre Kilner jar. And we'll be trying this a little bit later. Uh, preferably a vintage of a uh, prior made uh, blackberry whiskey, so that's two years old. But we'll try that at the end of the video. And some sugar. Uh, and again, I'll kind of measure this as I'm going. So I'm going to show you two methods to make this. Uh, so blackberries, pre-washed, dried out. Uh, and for the first method I'm going to show you, it is quite important that they dry. Uh, I'm going to try and get these in to the kiln jar without spilling them everywhere. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I'm kind of aiming for around two thirds or so. So let's see how we get on. So obviously they went everywhere, but I'm, I'm sorted now. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that weighed out at about 600 grams. So like I can say, either by sight, two thirds of a litre kiln jar, or around 600 grams. Okay, so, and again, I'm kind of going by sight here. So I've never actually measured how much sugar I use. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of like, let the sugar flow through the raspberries, if that makes sense. Give it a little agitation every so often. And I just kind of want to get the uh, get them all kind of coated a little bit more on this side. I can't remember where I saw this method. I think it was River Cottage, possibly. So there you go, you can kind of see, you know, you've got a bit of a general coating, and obviously, you know, the uh, the sugar sticking to the blackberries are going to burst, but that's kind of what I'm going for. So not too much sugar. And I'll tell you how much I've used. About 50 grams of sugar, so not very much, not very much. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour as much of this in as I can. Probably, you know, up to the lid, give it a shake, top it up. Probably don't need to top it off actually. Well, let's give it a shake anyway. Make sure it's on tight, obviously. There we go, there's the remainder. Happy days. 
Oh, that was a fire, but it's not. <laughs> so you can see we've got a bit of sugar there. Still kicking around. Obviously that will dissolve over time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of leave this in a, a diet cupboard. Uh, and every kind of, I don't know, every day, I'm gonna just come back, give it a shake until all the sugar's dissolved. Now you've got to be patient for this one. So leave this like this in the jar for about six months. And then strain it all out into a bottle. And if you can, <laughs> wait for another six months. And as always with these like kind of infusions, they, they tend to kind of age and get better as they get older. Uh, so if you can leave it a year, even better. Um, once it's kind of been in the bottle and aged, I would strain it again. And I'll, I'll tell you why, I'll show you why. So I didn't do that with this, and you can probably see there's a little bit of sediment and it looks probably worse than, uh, than it is because I've just poured uh, that. Um, but I would just give it one more kind of final strain just to kind of polish it and make sure you've not got any sediment at the bottom. And that's it. <laughs> that is it. Um, so, yeah, it's just a waiting game. Super simple. Bag of sugar, pick your own blackberries, bottle, kill the jar. Let's see. Happy days. I'm going to try that now. See if it's any good. In fact, I know it's good because I've already had some. But it was a while ago, and I'll tell you how well it's aged. And one thing I should mention before I do taste that is when you strain these blackberries out, don't throw them away. They will look pretty rubbish, uh, kind of like a browny purple. Uh, but they're still perfectly edible, and obviously they're full of whiskey. Uh, so feel free to just kind of eat them. Uh, but I would recommend putting them in a blackberry and apple pie. You cannot go wrong with that. It's really, really good, I promise. So don't waste these at all. Another option, another option is to get some plain cider. Um, preferably still, preferably still. Um, and then you don't want to kind of open cider and just leave it open. Uh, but for a couple of days, you should be okay. Um, put it in a container that, you know, you can kind of, I suppose easily get or drop these um, blackberries into. Leave it for a couple of days, strain the blackberries off and drink it and you've got fruit cider that is infused with whiskey. <laughs> Make sure you're tall when you're drinking it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Look at the clarity of that. And the colour is absolutely beautiful. Mm, you can definitely get the smoke from the smoky whiskey that I used. Um, it smells very much like a port. Let's dive in. Oh my god. <laughs> it's incredible. And despite kind of how strong it is, it, it, I mean, and obviously it's strong because you use a whiskey. The, the, the slight bit of sugar kind of tempers it and the blackberries just kind of round it out. Um, I would definitely have this neat as like an aperitif. Um, ideally at Christmas or some kind of special occasion because at the end of the day, it takes a long time to make and you've not got much of it. Uh, depending on how many kind of blackberries and things you want to pick, but oh, that is, that is really good. Slight kind of, ever so slight, a little bit of bitterness at the back end on the throat. But again, it's just, it's so kind of really rounded out and well balanced with like the sweetness from the fruit and from the little bit of sugar. And you can see the lacing on that as well. Sure, if that's coming through, but wow, that is good. It's really good. Well worth saving, I can tell you. 
unfortunately I didn't pick any blackberries last year, which is why that's two years old. Um, but I am writing that wrong this year. So anyway. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Hope you can make this yourself. Super, super easy. You really should. I definitely recommend this. It's one of the best kind of infusions that you can make, uh, especially if you're into foraging, country wines and all like that kind of, you know, that good stuff. So thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Give me a like and subscribe if you liked it. I will see you guys next time.